Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A win for Waco. The Baylor Bears men's basketball team bringing home the national championship after a big win against Gonzaga last night. The CDC says younger people are helping to fuel the latest spike in coronavirus infections. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Those details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, your screen says 69. It's actually 68 degrees right now, not too bad. But as Mike says, no jacket required today. And a good morning to you. It's Tuesday. It is April 6th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, yeah, definitely no jacket, but you saw raindrops coming in, right? Yeah, just light rain from Northern Bear County all the way into the downtown area this morning. The windshield wipers were going now and then. Yeah, I didn't get that much, but... No, you, you I, didn't, I didn't see anything out there. No yeah. fog, anything. We're starting to see a little bit of fog in places, though. Sam also said he saw a little bit of just kind of some some mist hanging around here. So uh, with the low clouds, you know, maybe a little sprinkle here and there, mist, drizzle, something like that. Roads may be damp, so watch that this morning. And out there by the airport, doesn't look like anything showing up in this picture. There may be a little bit of a sheen on the, uh, on the roads from uh, perhaps a little bit of mist. The only fog right now is out there in Kerrville at seven miles, but we've got so so much humidity it really came back up overnight and that's what's helping with all this moisture getting pumped in here and it's getting squeezed out in the form of a little sprinkle here or there 68 in town mid 60s in the hill country well, temperatures are up uh, a good 10 degrees on average from where it was at this time yesterday and uh, get used to it because it's going to be hot and the uh, oak did uh, drop down yesterday from the previous day still on the high side 9280 and throughout the rest of the morning we're not really going to be dropping down we've got all this humidity we've got the cloud cover out there so that's going to keep temperatures pretty steady now for the next few hours with a patchy fog and again maybe some mist on top of that and then later on this afternoon up to 85 degrees made it to 81 yesterday partly cloudy definitely warmer and it is going to start to get gusty winds going to be out of the southeast 15 20 25 miles per hour gusting from there breezy overnight tonight as well and then just keep adding to that number. Where will it stop? Plus, we take a look ahead to the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King is back in the house. Anything going on, sir? Oh, Mike, uh, things mostly quiet. The only thing we do have is some construction here and there this morning. So let's uh, go over here to the wall and give you a closer look at that. I'll start here on the north side, 1604 and uh, 281. They're installing some signs there on the flyover ramps. Uh, so those ramps are closed there and traffic being uh, diverted to the frontage roads uh, in that area. So that could cause some delays. That is uh, for the next half hour or so. Uh, a little further east on Pat Booker Road from uh, Village Oak to Athenian, that is a full closure there again until uh, 5 a.m. They're doing some road work there and we're going to take you all the way over to the west side now. Uh, this is uh, 151 at Loop 410. It's doing some work there. So expect some delays between military and 151 also at the Culebra Road intersection on uh, 410. Here's a look at Transkai 281. Uh, 410 at Rolling Ridge looking fine this morning. Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Homeowners on the west side woke up to their house on fire early this morning. Fire broke out in the 2200 block of South Trinity near Frio City Road. Our Sarah Costa is live and has more on the damage. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yeah, well, the scene is now clear, but the homeowners, when we, they wake up this morning, they're going to have a lot of cleanup to do. Just take a look behind me. You can see some of that damage. The front part of the home charred right there, right as you pull into the street on South Trinity. Now, firefighters say they were called out to the 2200 block of South Trinity at the intersection of Frio City Road at 2 o'clock this morning. When fire crews arrived, the couple who lives here was already safely outside of their home without any injuries. Firefighters say the fire was mainly on the outside of the home, but it did get into the attic, causing that damage to, be, to a big part of the of the home crews were able to knock out the fire pretty quickly but the flames did some damage about forty thousand dollars worth whether or not the couple was able to stay at their home or were forced to go somewhere else for the night isn't clear at this time and the cause of the fire also not clear arson investigators are still working to determine what started these flames at two o'clock this morning Live from the West Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. The director of the CDC says the U.S. is now at its fourth week of rising COVID infections as new cases increase in at least 19 states. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more from Washington. 
As younger people help fuel a surge in coronavirus cases, a plea from health experts to stay vigilant while vaccinations ramp up. The worst thing we could do right now would be to mistake progress for victory. COVID deaths are now rising in at least 18 states, hospitalizations up in 16 states, with a 23% jump in the upper Midwest. In Michigan, more than one-third of cases are in 20 to 39-year-olds who are less likely to be vaccinated. An ICU nurse near Detroit says she's seen more young patients now than any other time during the pandemic. Our age, and there's our children's age, and, and they are very sick. The director of the CDC says youth sports are partially to blame. We are learning that many outbreaks in young people are related to youth sports and extracurricular activities. Despite that warning, scenes like this in Texas at the Rangers home opener. <laughs> Nearly 40,000 fans packing the stadium, many without masks. Indiana's mask mandate is set to be lifted today. Loosening restrictions and contagious new variants are making the race to vaccinate even more urgent. An estimated one in four American adults has now gotten at least one dose of the vaccine. And we are getting new guidance when it comes to cleaning your home or office. The CDC says the risk of COVID infection from surfaces is extremely low. So in most cases, dish soap will work for cleaning those surfaces instead of disinfectants. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And here's where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home. 275 new cases were reported and no new deaths. In our hospitals, 179 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 72 are in the intensive care unit and 30 are on ventilators. The Minneapolis police chief has now testified that officer Derek Chauvin had clearly violated department policy when he pinned George Floyd's neck beneath his knee for more than nine minutes. Chief took the stand on day six of Chauvin's trial. He says continuing to kneel on Floyd's neck once he was handcuffed behind his back and lying in his stomach was in no way, shape or form part of department policy or even training. The defense has argued that Chauvin did what he was trained to do and that Floyd's use of illegal drugs and his underlying health conditions caused his death. One of the country's top judges wants to see better regulation of social media. In a 12-page opinion, Justice Clarence Thomas suggested Congress should consider laws to update how platforms control speech. He said social media has come to have unbridled control over unprecedented amounts of speech. Thomas's opinion comes as Twitter banned former President Trump from its platform for violating its rules on incitement of violence. Some conservatives have called on more regulations in the tech world to combat what they view as political bias on social media. No other justice joined Thomas's opinion. In Dallas, a suspect is in custody after police say he stole an ambulance from a fire station. Police say the suspect took him on a nearly two hour chase yesterday evening. At one point even hopped a curb and drove through yards of several homes. After running what appeared over what appeared to be spike strips, the driver tried to escape on foot but didn't get far. Police were able to take him into custody. And time now is 438 and about 69 degrees right now. Still ahead, Waco waking up to a national championship this morning, courtesy of the Baylor Bears men's basketball team. We have highlights for their big win over Gonzaga coming up. And not too much to celebrate for the San Antonio Spurs right now. We'll check out their loss against Cleveland last night. And outside with live cam, be on the lookout for some drizzle, light rain, and maybe some fog. We'll see how the rest of the day is shaping up. We are just getting started here on GMSA. We'll be right back. 441, they've been celebrating in the streets of Waco all night. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Trophy coming back to Texas thanks to the big win by the Baylor Bears last night up in Indianapolis. Nothing could stop Baylor from cutting down the nets, not even Gonzaga. The Bears obliterated Gonzaga's march to its own undefeated season last night. It was an 86-70 runaway that brought Baylor's once downtrodden program its first national title. After running to a 19 point lead early, the Bears never let Gonzaga get any closer than nine. And less than five minutes into the final, the Bears were ahead of Gonzaga by double digits. This was Gonzaga's first loss in 32 games this season. Baylor ended up outscoring all six of its opponents in the tournament by an average of 15 points. Beat Houston by 19 in the semifinal. Once again, congratulations to the Baylor Bears.
Well, the San Antonio Spurs were looking to end their historic nine game homestand on a high note with a third win hosting the Cleveland Cavaliers. San Antonio got off to a solid start. DeMar DeRozan finds Jakob Pertl in the paint and he spins for the lay in. The Spurs are up 17 to nine early. The San Antonio headed in the half trailing. 57 to 47 third quarter Spurs try to get something going. Lucas Monich drives hard to the basket gets it to fall Spurs down by 12 but Cleveland would keep pouring it on for the rest of the game Spurs needed up uh, ended up shooting just 42% from the floor and they lose their final game of this home stand final 125 101 next up Spurs travel to Denver tomorrow that game starts at 8 o'clock they stay in Denver on Friday for a rematch. And then on Sunday, the Spurs will be in Dallas to take on the Mavericks. All right, hoping for better luck on the road. Go Spurs, go. Right now it's 443. And still ahead, we have some of the top ways to stop those pesky robocalls from getting to your phone. And if you noticed an increase in prices at the grocery store, up next, details on the reason for the price hike. And welcome back. It's 446. Grocery prices have been rising since the beginning of the pandemic and they are expected to get worse this summer. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, grocery store sticker shock. I don't think anybody realized, you know, the, the magnitude of issues that we're seeing within the supply chain right now. Whether you're buying your food in other staples online or in stores, it's not your imagination. Costs are climbing. Nobody wants to absorb that cost. So unfortunately, the person or people that are going to bear it are, are the consumers. According to the latest government data, the price U.S. consumers pay for groceries is up three and a half percent over the last 12 months. For a family of four, that could be as much as $500 more a year. And analysts predict it'll only get worse this summer. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have expert advice on how to navigate these looming price hikes and the products you can swap to keep your grocery bills from skyrocketing. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Robocalls are a nuisance, and now there are fresh concerns that a Supreme Court ruling may lead to even more of them. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris looks at the best ways to block them. If you're interested in renewing your auto warranty now. How many times have you heard that? It may not seem like it, but there were fewer robocalls last year, according to UMail, a blocking and tracking service. Credit improved technology and enforcement, but mostly the pandemic. It shut down a lot of call centers. But hold the phone, robocalls are on the upswing again, annoying and betting her. It makes me angry that people feel like they can set up a computer and intrude on my life. To make it stop, Ann got an app called Nomo Robo, which claims to block robocalls for $2 a month. Other popular call blocking apps include Haya, Mr. Number, and Robo Killer. But Consumer Report says your cell phone company's new tools may be a better option. For the most part, consumers don't need to do anything to get these services to work. Calls that are legit will be allowed to ring and calls that aren't will either be blocked or they'll show up with an alert. But depending on your cell phone, your cell phone company and plan, you may have to manually set up that call blocking service. You can also try a more drastic step where you tweak your phone settings to allow calls only from people on your contact list. With this option, you'll have to update your contacts list often to avoid missing important calls. And finally, you can always let your calls go to voicemail. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I have the AT&T Call Protect app that's supposed to block some of this junk. Did it work? It does okay. I mean, it's not great, but stuff still sneaks through. Well, at least it's like no sooner something. did we get the Supreme Court ruling yes. and the auto warranty calls, like they were like, hey, we're back and we're back even, <laughs> even stronger than even ever. Even stronger <laughs> than ever before. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. hopefully uh, they can work that out, maybe. Hopefully. Let's see how things are looking on the roads at 449. Samuel King is in the traffic lab. Yeah, and some of those calls, they use your local area code, so... You think it's something that you're waiting for, but you know, big problem out there. And uh, it is important to update your car warranty though. 
So <laughs> there's that. Uh, but taking a look outside on the roads, things are looking uh, fine uh, at the moment. No uh, crashes or collisions or anything, but we do have uh, some construction uh, here and there. Uh, let's start here on uh, 281. Uh, this is over 1604. The flyover ramps there are, are closed, so there is some construction in this area. But some good news on uh, 281. More of the main lanes as part of that project. Uh, north of uh, 1604 are opening, so that's uh, good for people who use uh, 281 to commute each day. Also here in the northeast side, again, uh, Pat Booker Road, Village Oak to Athenian closed until the top of the hour, so another 10 minutes or so. Also out here on the west side, uh, more construction here, uh, 410 at uh, 151. Also going to be some uh, work here during uh, the day on uh, 410 as well. So not just this construction that should be wrapping up here in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. So that's something to uh, watch out for. Transguide uh, 35 uh, downtown uh, flowing well this morning as is 281 at 410. Guys. Thank you, Sam. Let's see what's Mike and one of our regular viewers, Yvonne, are cooking up this morning. Very All right. Nice. On our, we have a, a, an iPad over there, and it's got just like little thumbnail pictures on it. I was looking at it, I was like, what is that? And then I had to enlarge it. Okay. And those are all the oak catkins on the ground. Oh, that's oh, not like grout, like pebbles? No, or I thought it was. No. <laughs> that's, that's why I was like, what is that, Yvonne? Oh, so, yeah, they're everywhere. And those uh -huh. the dangling caterpillars as yeah. well? Yes. I had some of those uh, the other day on my car. So mm -hmm. everything is it's falling from there. But it, it seemed like it, you know, it was put off for a while. And like, are we going to, you know, miss oak season this year? Nope. Eh. Okay, yeah, it's out there, and uh, you saw the numbers were about uh, 9,200 or something like that. So we should be close to the peak of the season, but it's still going to be sticking around. All right, we've got a lot of clouds out there this morning, and there may be, notice a little bit of a reflection on the, uh, on the highway over there, 410 by the airport, so there may be just a little bit of mist. Now, visibility is not a problem anywhere around the metro area right now. Very warm temperatures, about 10 above what it was at this time yesterday, and there is a lot more humidity, and of course, there's the threshold, 60, and so everybody's at 60 or above, which means you walk outside and it's like, yep, it's humid out there. And we are going to see this humidity continue throughout the rest of today. So just get you, it may drop slightly as it usually does in the afternoon, but it's still going to be humid out there and it's even going to be hotter and the humidity is just going to be sticking around pumped on in here. So we'll have probably a little bit more mist around the area tomorrow. Fog, maybe not just because there's going to be a decent breeze overnight. Then watch the dry air try and come on in here. So by noon, we'll still have some humidity. It's going to start to dry out in the hill country and that will continue to work on down through here by late afternoon at about dinner time time as the dry line moves on through. So at least it'll be more comfortable late in the afternoon. Then the humidity is going to come back in here overnight and we'll go through the same thing then on Thursday. Humidity in the morning drying out in the afternoon. But again, that dry air heats up a lot more easily. So then that's going to help temperatures to uh, head up over the next couple of days. A little bit of mist around the area this morning and we will see some sunshine sort of mixed in with the clouds later on this afternoon. Kind of like what we had yesterday, maybe even a bit more sunshine. Same thing uh, tomorrow. Again, the humidity returns, a little bit of moisture in the morning, and then we'll see more sunshine in the afternoon. And we are looking at some very, very hot temperatures. Not only is it going to be hot today, getting up into the uh, about 85 degree range, well above normal, but even hotter the next few days. 77 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. Again, some of those leftover clouds from the morning hours, and then 85 for high temperatures. So we are going to be a good Mm, six, uh, seven degrees above normal. Breezy as well. It's going to stay breezy tonight. Tomorrow, mid 60s again, and it will be somewhat less humid in the afternoon, but we're looking at 90, then 95s both Thursday and Friday, and somewhat less humid. Friday, we're going to have to be on the lookout uh, for a late afternoon thunderstorm or two. It's kind of like the odds are not great that it would happen, but if it does, it could be strong. So there's kind of one of those caps in the atmosphere, a lid in the atmosphere that gets popped through. Are you worried about severe at all with any of these? Yeah, there is. If something pops, mm -hmm. it would be strong potentially, but there's nothing, you know, no advisories, anything like that is right. Just something to, to keep in mind for uh, for Friday afternoon. But other than that, it's just going to be really hot. Well, it is Thursday, that time Friday. of year. I mean, the storms. Yep. Yeah, well, we'll watch out for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We will. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 454 on your Tuesday morning. And coming up next, a first look at the new Space Jam movie starring LeBron James.
Justin Bieber fans like Steph get an Easter surprise, plus a first look at the Space Jam movie. And for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Fans of Justin Bieber got an Easter surprise. The Canadian singer released a six-track album called Freedom, notifying fans on Instagram. The Beliebers were shocked by the drop of the new release because the 16-track Justice album came out just two weeks ago. Justice debuted in first place last week on the Billboard 200 album chart. This week, it's in second. Welcome to the Space Jam. With the release date nearly two months away, the official trailer for Space Jam, A New Legacy, is now out. The trailer introduces four-time NBA champ LeBron James, who will now take center stage in the sequel to the 1996 film starring Michael Jordan and the rest of the Looney Tunes cast. James is featured recreating his iconic Miami Heat dunk with Lola Bunny. And celebrating birthdays today, Ant-Man actor Paul Rudd, reality star Todd Chrisley, and actress Candace Cameron Bure. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, Los Angeles. It is now 4.58. And still ahead on GMSA, testimony continues in the trial of Derek Chauvin. We're going to tell you who is expected to take the stand today. Plus, someone built the world's largest Nintendo Switch and all the buttons work. Details ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A man with a shotgun in the parking lot of a Northwest Side hotel overnight. We have details just ahead. Plus, the jury hears more testimony from experts and officials in the trial of Derek Chauvin. Well, kind of a mixed bag of tricks this morning out there from Mother Nature. We have clouds, we have some fog, maybe some drizzle or light rain, but it looks like the heat is still going to be on for South Texas. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, April 6th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And on Mark's way into work, there was some rain, but I didn't see anything. I just like to use my windshield wipers now and then. Mike Osterage <laughs> is here. When are we going to get some decent rain around here, Mike? Uh, not anything in the future. Uh, there may be, I mean, very, very small chance of a thunderstorm trying to pop up on Friday, but I really wouldn't even, it's hardly even worth a mention. And yeah, as far as any decent rain, there's unfortunately nothing in the forecast for at least the next seven days. This morning, we are starting off at 68 degrees and it it is extremely warm and humid out there. Uh, notice how that bottom number, the dew point, has gone above 60. That means you walk outside and go, yep, it's humid. You can feel it. We got a decent breeze right now. We did have a, a hint of fog in the uh, hill country this morning, but the, the breeze has kind of picked up, and that is something that is kind of works against getting any fog to develop. 85 for a high temperature today. So, yep, it is going to be very, very hot, and the humidity will be sticking around later on this afternoon. The aquifer took a little bit of a hit yesterday, down two tenths of a foot, and the allergens. Now, oak is still very, very high. All the little catkins, little dingle fob thingies, whatever, are all over the ground right now. Uh, but at least that count did come down from the, the previous day's reading. So we have a, a decent breeze, like I said, right now out of the uh, southeast. And all that's doing is continuing to pull in all this moisture. And uh, as the atmosphere, this moisture just kind of comes on in here, basically hits the escarpment and can't hold it anymore. So that's why we have a few little uh, light sprinkles, some mist, maybe some uh, drizzle out of the uh, southeast. But um, five, 10 miles per hour. We do have a couple of gusts out there. Bernie stage right now is gusting to 18 and it is going to be breezier, especially later on this afternoon. So this morning mist, uh, maybe some drizzle, very, very warm. And then we're going to sort of have a mixture of sunshine and clouds, kind of like yesterday, maybe a little bit more sunshine, 85 for a high temperature. And again, it is going to be on the breezy side tomorrow. We get up to 90. Now we'll see less humid air in the afternoon with the dry line coming through here. And it's going to be one of those where this thing just kind of does a, a tennis match and keeps going back and forth. So we'll have the humidity come back in. Then Thursday morning, dry line comes through dry air in the afternoon, and that's going to allow us to get up into the mid nineties. And then we have another bit of a front for the weekend. So won't be as hot, but still going to be hot. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Sam McKing is back this morning. Anything big going on? Uh, nothing too big going on uh, this morning, Mike. And traffic times look fairly normal. 25 minutes from Bernie to uh, downtown on I-10. 28 minutes uh, on Boverde, from Boverde to downtown on 281. <clears throat> and 26 minutes on 35 coming in from the New Braunfels area. I do have one crash on the board, but it is not on a major highway. We can give you a closer look at that. So we head over here uh, to the wall. This is on the west side, just north of uh, Calabria Road. This is at Continental and uh, Broadview, but again, not on any of the major highways. And the closest uh, major road there is uh, Calabria Road. Also have a little bit of a slowdown on 1604 west of uh, I-10 heading 
over toward uh, Agave Pass and Valero Way. So we'll just watch out for that uh, this morning. Uh, taking a look east side now, 35 at uh, New Braunfels Avenue. Traffic building a little bit, but flowing well. And we'll have another update coming up in a few minutes, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you, Samuel. Arson investigators working to determine what caused a fire to break out at a home on the city's west side early this morning. This was happening in the 2200 block of South Trinity near Frio City Road. Our Sarah Costa shows us the damage. Good morning in the front of the home. Pretty charred and the smell of smoke still pretty strong this morning. Just take a look at the house right behind me where you can see where that fire broke out around two o'clock this morning. The scene is now clear, but the homeowners will still have a lot of cleanup to do. Firefighters say they were called out to the 2200 block of South Trinity at the intersection of Frio City Road at two o'clock this morning. When fire crews arrived, the couple who lives here was already safely outside of the home without any injuries. Firefighters save. The fire was mainly on the outside of the house, but it did get into the attic, causing damage to a big part of the home. Crews were able to knock out the fire pretty quickly, but the flames did do some damage about $40,000 worth. Whether or not the couple was able to stay at their home or were forced to go somewhere else for the night isn't clear at this time. Now the cause of the fire has still not been determined. Arson investigators are working to find that cause. From the west side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is recovering in the hospital after being shot in the leg overnight on the city's northwest side. This happened just before 1 a.m. in the 6800 block of northwest to Loop 410. That's not far from Ingram Park Mall. Officers say the man was in the parking lot of a Red Roof Inn when someone in a vehicle pulled up and shot at him with a shotgun. That victim was taken to the hospital in stable condition. The suspect got away in a gray or silver car. No arrests have been made. That's 506. The jury in the Derek Chauvin trial has now heard from the ER doctor who tried to resuscitate George Floyd. They've also heard from the Minneapolis police chief who fired Derek Chauvin. Here's ABC's Alex Perche with the details. Do you swear or affirm? The most high profile witness so far has taken the stand in the murder trial of Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer charged with killing George Floyd. Chauvin's ex-boss, Police Chief Madero Arredondo, testifying what Chauvin did to Floyd violated the policy and values of the department. It is contrary to our training to indefinitely place um, your knee on a prone, handcuffed individual for an indefinite period of time. I vehemently disagree that that was the appropriate use of force for that situation. The chief delivering this blunt assessment of Chauvin's conduct. Is this a trained Minneapolis Police Department defensive tactics technique? It is not. I absolutely agree that violates our policy. That sentiment echoed by Inspector Katie Blackwell, the former commander in charge of training for the department. I don't know what kind of improvised position that is. So that's not what we train. Under cross-examination, Chauvin's attorney showed the police chief pictures and questioned whether Chauvin's knee was actually on Floyd's neck the entire time. Would you agree that from the perspective of Officer King's body camera, it appears that Officer Chauvin's knee was more on Mr. Floyd's shoulder blade? Yes. But the prosecution responding, saying that was one specific moment when the ambulance had already arrived. The ER doctor who pronounced George Floyd dead also testified, saying he believes the primary reason for Floyd's cardiac arrest was lack of oxygen, not a heart attack or drug overdose, even though the powerful opioid fentanyl was found in Floyd's system. Alex Perche, ABC News, New York. And time now is 508 and about 69 degrees right now. Still ahead, a popular social media app launching a direct payment feature for content creators. Plus... 18,000 people in the United States are diagnosed with life-threatening illnesses where a bone marrow transplant is the best treatment option. Just ahead on GMSA, one four-year-old girl is on a mission to find her match and help save others too. And taking a look outside with live cam, pretty mild for the most part. We're in the upper 60s right now, but we are expecting a hot week. We'll be right back. 512, each year more than 18,000 people in the U.S. are diagnosed with a life-threatening illness where a bone marrow transplant is their best treatment option. 
thousands of those on the list are children, and only 30% have a matching relative, leaving many hoping for a stranger to save their life. One of those on the list, a little four-year-old who is on a mission for a match. Max Massey has her story. Blowing up the candles for a fourth birthday is a huge milestone for twins Mackenzie and Sloan Caston. They're beautiful, amazing girls and they're so vivacious and you know with Sloan, Sloan is so resilient. Born healthy, six pound bundles of joy. At 11 months, Sloan was diagnosed with a rare brain tumor. Despite treatment, cancer kept coming back in her spine, then in her blood. Her only real hope for a healthy life, a bone marrow transplant. Her sister, while a perfect match on the playground, not a match for a donor. As a, I think a human being, when this gets something like this gets thrown at you, it's amazing what you become. Hashtag Sloan Strong has become a worldwide campaign on the gift of life registry, appealing to everyone to get swabbed, especially young adults. Between, uh, I believe it's 18 and 35 year olds is where you get 80% of the matches. So far, Sloan Strong has inspired 3,000 people to get registered and has helped save two lives while her family waits for her miracle match. She gives me an enormous amount of strength. She's courageous. We call her the GOAT. She is the greatest of all time. You stay strong for your kids and it's part of life and we hope that, you know, there's a happy ending. Uh, it's scary to think what could be, but you know, we try to live one day at a time. Because Sloan and her sister are not identical twins, Mackenzie had a one in four chance of being a match. It turns out she is only a half match, which is not enough for a successful transplant. So their search continues. Anyone under the age of 60 can get swabbed. To request a free kit, go to giftoflife.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 514 and we are in the upper 60s to start your day. And still ahead, more details on how Zoom is once again expanding and making it easier for people to connect. I have the power to lower my A1C because I can still make my own insulin. And Trulicity activates my body to release it. Once weekly Trulicity is for type 2 diabetes. Most people taking it reached an A1C under 7%. Trulicity may also help you lose up to 10 pounds and lower your risk of cardiovascular events, whether you know you're at risk or not. Trulicity isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. It's not approved for use in children. Don't take Trulicity if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, changes in vision, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Taking Trulicity with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which can lead to dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I have it within me to lower my A1C. Ask your doctor about once weekly Trulicity. 517, the social audio app Clubhouse offering a new feature that will let users send money to content creators. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in this morning's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a new payment feature on Clubhouse. Users can now send money directly to content creators on the social audio app. The feature is being described as a virtual tip jar. The app's founder recently said he wants to focus on getting money directly to creators. Amazon is making its Echo Show 10 compatible with Zoom. Zoom meetings will start automatically for users with linked calendars, while others can just say, Alexa, join my meeting. The Echo Show 10 will also track your movements to keep you in frame. Finally, the world's largest fully operational Nintendo Switch is more than six times the size of a real Switch, measuring 30 inches tall and 70 inches wide and weighing 65 pounds. It was built for a good cause. It's being given to Children's Hospital in Alabama, and we know that the children are definitely going to enjoy that one. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. It'd take two or three people to use it. Yeah, I was going to say the children and adults, I think. I right. think a lot of people are going to want to try that out. Kind of a group activity. 518 on your Tuesday. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King this morning. Thank you, uh, Stephanie and Mark. First, looking at some other travel times now. 28 minutes, you're coming in from the Pleasanton area on 37. 19 minutes from Castroville on US 90. And 17 minutes uh, from Lytle 
on I-35. Taking a look here on the maps, no uh, crashes on the board at all as we head uh, over to the wall. Relatively quiet morning so far, and that's a good thing. Even this sort of slowdown here just uh, uh, west of I-10 on 1604 has started to clear up too, so not too much to worry about there. Bandera Road between 410 and 1604, 11 minutes heading uh, northbound, 10 minutes heading southbound, so a fairly normal time this morning. And here's a look at Transguide 410 at uh, San Pedro near the airport. Uh, things looking fine this morning. Mark, Stephanie, and thank, Mike. Thank you, Samuel. A nice pop of color behind you. I love this. I mean, just when you, yeah, is it is it pink? Is it a little bit of, uh, I don't know, kind of a neat color. It's basically pink, but. Nice to see, see stuff blooming. Yes, yeah. Definitely. That's mm -hmm. gorgeous, though. Most things have started to recover from the big winter storm, but not quite everything. No, still, I mean, and then a lot of things just were, you know, completely from all that, uh, from all that cold air that we had out there. But uh, yeah, the, well, pollen didn't suffer because oak is still very high. All right, we've had a little bit of mist around the area. I didn't see anything. These folks, the, Mark and uh, Sam saw a little bit of mist this morning coming into work, so you may run into just a couple of specks out there as bright now. Everybody is definitely on the warm side. Uh, mid upper 60s even heading out to the west and down to the uh, southwest and get ready because you folks there along the Rio Grande are going to be really scorching uh, by at least Thursday and Friday. Wind is out of the south southeast at about um, 10 5 10 miles per hour. We had a couple of gusts earlier. That's just continuing to pump in all that humidity and so that's why dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere have gone up about 5 to 10 degrees and they are going to continue to go up over the next couple of days. So that's why we're going to have morning mist and yeah, probably not any fog. There was a chance and we saw a little bit of it earlier this morning, but the wind has picked up and it looks like it's going to be breezy, especially overnight tonight. There's the uh, computer model. A couple of little sprinkles here and there. No big deal. Just that nuisance kind of stuff. And then we'll see sort of a you know mixture of sunshine and clouds, maybe a little bit more than what we had yesterday. Clouds come back in tomorrow morning, maybe a little bit of mist around the area. And then kind of the same scenario. The difference, though, with tomorrow is we will have somewhat of a dry line moving through here late in the day. So that's going to knock the humidity out temporarily late in the afternoon. That's really going to help temperatures then shoot up into the 90s. Then as we go into the rest of the week, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon, as well as on Friday. And so you can see those low clouds there on the uh, satellite picture, that darker shade of gray. And up to the north, now yeah, we got another couple of storm systems, but notice how most everything is staying up here to the north of us. We're not seeing the big kind of roller coaster action in the upper level winds that we saw few weeks ago, so it's transitioning more into just a summertime weather pattern, which means very tranquil. And unfortunately for that, for us, that means that we're not seeing any rain in the forecast for at least the next week, maybe even longer than that. If something pops up, great, but there's nothing in sight right now. 77 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature. We make it up to 85 later on today. Got in the low 80s yesterday, so it's going to be much hotter. It is going to be breezy, wind out of the south to southeast, about 10, 20 miles per hour, kind of gusting. And that's going to be the situation overnight. More mist again tomorrow. Very warm, very humid. Then we make it up to 90 tomorrow. Oh, and if that's not hot enough for you, we'll go for 95 on Thursday and Friday. And that's here in town, so we're looking at upper 90s and potentially a couple of triple digits down there to the uh, west and to the southwest. I like that. You're like, if that's not hot enough for you, here, here are some other options. <laughs> what almost, would you pay? Don't answer because it's yeah. going to get hotter. So it's almost like we're pretending it's June for a couple of days. Yeah, 95 is the, the normal high temperature, even uh, into July, the wow. normal high, June and July. So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mike. 523. And still ahead on GMSA, Marvel continues their domination of the small screen with a brand new series plus a classic film returning to theaters. A familiar Marvel character in a new show and a much loved film returning to theaters. CNN's David Daniel has it all in today's Hollywood Minute. You really believe in this low key variant? Luckily, he believes in himself enough for the both of us. Here's your latest look at Loki, the new series focused on Tom Hiddleston's popular Marvel character. The new trailer racked up nearly 4 million views in its first nine hours on YouTube. Loki premieres June 11th on Disney+. Plus. 
Fathom Events is resuming its TCM Big Screen Classics series with spotlight showings of favorite films. 1987's La Bamba is set to play in select cinemas on Sunday, April 18th, Wednesday, April 21st, and Thursday, April 22nd. Check fathomevents.com for locations and showtimes. For most of the world, Michelle Nichols is Lieutenant Uhura pop culture icon. But what they don't know is that she changed the space program forever. Nichelle Nichols' biggest battle wasn't with aliens on Star Trek, but with bureaucracy at NASA. The documentary Woman in Motion shows how the actress and activist helped change a largely white and male space program into a much more diverse agency. The film's first trailer just dropped. The doc premieres June 3rd on Paramount+. Plus. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It is now 527. And still ahead on GMSA, all 50 states either have expanded or will soon expand COVID-19 vaccine eligibility to everyone 16 and older. But medical experts say the expansion is happening as variants continue to spread and cause concern. For now, to a scheduled EAS test, we're going to be right back. Good morning, and it's Tuesday, April 6th. Glad you are with us. Mike has been keeping an eye on a few sprinkles and perhaps some fog. Here's an update. Yeah, uh, we haven't seen any fog in about the past hour. The wind has picked up a little bit, so that usually helps to prevent the fog. There was some out in the hill country earlier this morning. I don't think it's going to be too big of a problem. You can see some low clouds hanging around here. And again, it almost looks like there's a bit of a reflection on a 410, so maybe some mist. I didn't see anything coming into work. Mark did, Sam did, so, you, you know, scattered about here and there. A little bit of a mist and or drift. Very warm. You can pretty much forget about a jacket today and the next uh, few days. Shorts and flip flops definitely in the afternoon. 63 is the dew point temperature, which means there's a lot of humidity out there. Wind out of the south at 10 miles per hour. And everybody, well, except Lost Maples, but you get above. 60. That's always that threshold where you really start to feel the humidity and it's going to be sticking around and probably even going up by uh, later on this afternoon. Oak is on the high side. You may be feeling that it's really, really gone up the past couple of days, although it did come down from the previous day's reading when it was about 12,000 or so. Throughout the rest of today, uh, it's going to look a lot like yesterday, maybe a bit more sunshine in the afternoon. 77 at noon, 85 for high temperature. It is definitely going to be hotter. Wind out of the southeast about 10, 15 uh, miles per hour gusting on top of that, and especially tonight, it is going to be uh, getting breezy around here. Thermometers keep going up throughout the rest of the week. How high will we hit? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King. What's going on, sir? Uh, good morning, uh, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Things are uh, looking relatively quiet uh, on the uh, board uh, this morning. No uh, crashes or any other incidents. Most of the construction we had overnight uh, has been cleared up as we go over to uh, the maps over here. One of the only real slowdowns we're seeing is here uh, near the airport on uh, San Pedro Avenue. Uh, loop 410, but even that is starting to uh, clear up a little bit, so that's definitely a good sign this morning. Uh, taking a look here at some uh, travel times across the region, 25 minutes if you're coming in from New Braunfels to downtown San Antonio, 24 minutes on I-10 uh, coming in as well, and then 22 minutes from Lavernia, 28 minutes from Floresville, uh, 28 minutes also on I-10 coming in from Seguin this morning, so all of those travel times looking fairly normal. And here's 281 at uh, Loop 410, traffic building a little bit but still flowing very well this morning. We'll have another update coming up guys. Thank you Samuel. 
Two people may have to pay with their freedom for a crash that killed a man and left a toddler with severe injuries. Those people are facing criminal charges now. The crash happened last Wednesday evening on Rigsby Avenue right outside Comanche Park. Katrina Weber is at the scene with details on their arrest. Now, Katrina, we understand one of these suspects is the mother of the toddler. That's right. The charges against her have to do with not having the two year old in a child safety seat. Now, the other suspect is accused of actually causing the crash while racing here on Rigsby Avenue. Both of them, 24 year old Daniel Tejas and 20 year old Selena Hernandez, were officially arrested and charged in this case yesterday. The arrest affidavit, affidavit says Tejas was not only driving recklessly, but also doing so with no driver's license and with Hernandez's unrestrained child in the car. The affidavit says surveillance cameras captured him last Wednesday, driving at almost 90 miles per hour in this 40-mile zone. It says he slammed into a car being driven by 80-year-old Antonio Aris Mendez Martinez, killing him. The affidavit says Martinez was making a turn onto Rigsby from Covington Road at the time. The impact caused his driver's side door to cave in more than two feet. Tejas's car caught fire. The affidavit says he had three passengers with him, including Hernandez and her two-year-old daughter. Witnesses told police that after the crash, neither Hernandez nor any of the others tried to pull the toddler out of the burning car. Bystanders had to rescue her. According to the affidavit, the two-year-old suffered spinal injuries and is now paralyzed on one side of her body. It says that both uh, Tejas and Hernandez were treated for injuries as well uh, after the crash. Now they face charges, and for Tejas, that includes manslaughter. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. By May 1st, all 50 states will have extended COVID-19 vaccine eligibility to everyone 16 years of age and older. As CNN's Brett Conway reports, the race is on between vaccinations and variants. From production to packaging to planes to the pavement and to the people. Okay, here we go. The COVID-19 vaccine rollout is going strong, with every state announcing plans to expand vaccine eligibility to people 16 years and older, if they haven't already. But Dr. Ashish Jaha, epidemiologist Michael Osterholm, and Dr. Paul Offit worry it's creating false hope. Average new case counts are up more than 16 percent these past two weeks. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says part of the reason for the rise is because of variants like the one first spotted in the U.K. It's not long before it's going to sweep across the country. And the variants make it particularly concerning. That's because there are still so many questions about the variants. To date, we, we don't know that these variants have completely escaped immunity, where, where, for example, if you've been naturally infected or immunized, you still may be hospitalized or be in an ICU. And there are other variants popping up, like the one first identified in India that's also been reported in California, not to mention the variants still to come as viruses mutate over time. Where will these new variants come from that we couldn't even imagine today? Still, they all agree vaccinations are our best bet. Either get vaccinated or if we haven't had a chance to get a vaccine yet, at least wear a mask and social distance. So we really do have to hunker down for a few more weeks. I'm Britt Conway reporting. A bankruptcy case against the Boy Scouts of America could exceed $103 billion. A committee consisting of survivors of childhood sexual abuse in the case have filed a legal request to submit their own reorganizational plan for the organization. Group says victims are not duly compensated under the $300 million fund currently set up for consideration. They say $103 billion is more appropriate for a compensation fund, which would cover 84,000 claims. Boy Scouts put out a statement saying the organization will continue to work with survivors and insurers to compensate victims. The American College of Physicians says shorter antibiotic regimens may be better and safer for certain infections. The group issued new best practice advice for treating ailments like acute bronchitis, community acquired pneumonia, and certain skin infections. The group says unnecessarily long courses of antibiotics for these conditions can contribute to antibiotic resistance. That's when bacteria becomes resistant to the drugs designed to kill it. They say shorter courses also lowers a patient's risk of side effects. Time check, 538 on your Tuesday. And still ahead, why one of the biggest manufacturers and sellers of smartphones deciding to call it quits. And up next, details on a pill that could lessen the severity of the coronavirus.
and taking a look outside with live cam. We're at a mild 68, 69 degrees outside, but uh, you can brace for that heat. It's coming this week. We'll be right back. 541, lots of pills and other remedies have been suggested to stop the worst side effects of the coronavirus. Some are scams, but some are serious medicine. Ursula Perry tells us about the research that might mean you could pop a pill that may lessen the severity of the virus. For some, COVID symptoms are very mild, a little cough, maybe a runny nose, a low grade fever. But what if you could take a pill for two weeks and your COVID's gone? <coughs> For some, COVID symptoms are very mild at first, maybe a stuffy nose, a cough, a low-grade fever. But can you keep COVID from getting any worse? Researchers are studying an antiviral drug called Upamastat. They want to know if taking one pill a day right away will help. Like we learned with Tamiflu and flu, you know, typical antiviral effect is seen as soon as possible after the infection. So we want people to be within three days, ideally, of having symptoms. Researchers are enrolling people who have symptoms or test positive for COVID. Half of the participants get a placebo, the others get the investigational drug, and they take it once a day for 14 days. Patients will monitor their heart rates and oxygen levels, then send that information to the researchers through a smartphone app. If you can give something oral and keep people home so they're not hospitalized, they're not dying from it. I think it's a plus for healthcare, uh, plus globally for all these hospitals that were overwhelmed with COVID. Researchers are testing the safety and the effectiveness of the dosage on this particular drug, but they say there are many other drugs that are in the pipeline that are also rising to the challenge, including one coming out of Israel that is inhaled directly into the lungs and is supposed to cut the recovery time for COVID down to three to five days. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. And time now is 543 and it's about 68 degrees right now. Up next, uh, why some of the biggest airlines are revealing customers have had problems booking flights online. In your morning consumer headlines, several U.S. air carriers experienced online booking issues on Monday. That includes American, United and Delta Airlines. Customers were reportedly not able to book flights online. The company's websites weren't uploading available flights to their booking pages. All three companies acknowledged the issue on Twitter. Reports indicate that software provided by Google, which typically shows flight and price data, had some sort of bug that prevented passengers from searching or booking flights. Other major U.S. carriers, including JetBlue and Southwest Airlines, were not affected. The highly competitive smartphone market is losing a major player. LG has announced it will soon leave the smartphone business after nearly two decades of innovative mobile designs. CNN's Mary Maloney shows us the three reasons why the once pioneering tech giant is calling it quits. LG is hanging up its smartphone business. The South Korean tech giant announcing its mobile phone division is expected to wind down by the end of July. In U.S. market, it's the third largest vendor with almost 9% market share. LG was once one of the top three global smartphone makers. Its displays and cameras were among the best on the market. But experts say in the end, it couldn't keep up. Squeezed at the top by high-end companies like Samsung and Apple. Squeezed at the bottom by cheaper Chinese smartphone brands. The move comes after years of losses, dwindling popularity, and a shift in focus. The company says it will now focus on growth areas like electric vehicle components, smart homes, and artificial intelligence. Still people use LG TVs, LG washing machines, LG refrigerators, and I think they have an opportunity to enter into a lot of other consumer lifestyle devices. LG became known for pushing the limits of design. In 2013, it came out with a curved smartphone screen. Last year, it unveiled a 5G-enabled smartphone that came with two screens, including one that could rotate up to 90 degrees. And just three months ago, the company was still turning heads. LG revealing a phone that could be rolled up to turn into a tablet. The decision to call it quits was met with an outpouring of nostalgia on social media, with people sharing photos of their first LG phones and praising the company's innovative spirit. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. Right now it's 548.
go ahead and check in with Samuel King. The roads have been okay so far. Yeah, and that continues, uh, Mark and Stephanie. Things uh, looking relatively uh, quiet on, on the roads at this point. We hope it stays that way uh, as uh, the commute really gets going. So let's go over here to uh, the wall. You can see a uh, pretty green over there. Some good news also for commuters who use 281. Uh, TxDOT reports the main lanes on 281 north of Evans Road should be open as part of that construction project uh, past uh, Stone Oak and TPC Parkway. Uh, so that's uh, good news for those uh, drivers who use that area. There's still some construction, particularly here uh, at the intersection of 281 and uh, Stone Oak and TPC. They're still doing some work there. That should open soon. So there are some detours uh, in that area and there should be a uh, signage posted. But uh, we've heard from people using uh, the new main lanes and they say the ones that are open have really cut down on their commute time. So well, that's good news for those drivers. That project uh, continuing and uh, making progress. And so the, here's a look at the travel times now. Look at that northbound time. Six minutes now between 6 and 04 and Bulverde Road. Eight minutes uh, going the other way. You can definitely see how uh, those new uh, main lanes make a difference in terms of the travel time on 281 north of 1604. And 281 at 410. Again, traffic uh, building a little bit, but things look fine this morning, guys. Yeah, I live up that way, uh, Samuel, and it's <coughs> making quite a difference, but they're still doing quite a bit of work wrapping things up on the frontage road and the turnarounds, mm -hmm. things like that. So there are still detours from time to time. So we're getting closer, though. That's the good news. Right. But it is amazing. I finally drove up there the other day, yeah. and I was like, wow, I'm at TPC Parkway already? I know. Zip, yeah. zip, zip. Yeah, it used to take forever yes. to get up there with it traffic. Helps. but Very nice. Someday it'll all be finished. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. All right, take a look outside right now, and this was the uh, high drama and... Wilson Hill, Colorado County, beautiful picture. Notice there are a few clouds left over. That's going to be the situation again today. We will have a mixture of sunshine and clouds, kind of like we had yesterday. A lot of clouds this morning, a lot of humidity and some mist around the area this morning. Haven't seen a whole heck of a lot, but just can don't be surprised if there is a little bit of mist. Roads may be damp and the reason for that, all this moisture just keeps getting pumped on in here from the southeast and a fairly decent breeze out there, especially for this time of the morning, about uh, 10, 15 mile per hour winds in some cases, 16 up there at Kerbin. We have seen some gusts already this morning approaching 20, and it is going to be breezy this afternoon and then especially tonight. High temperatures yesterday made it up to 81 in town. And then also, you know, rule of thumb, add about five, six degrees or so to that. So we had some mid and even upper 80s down to the southwest. And then today, it's going to be even warmer 85 here in town. We're looking at uh, about 10 or more degrees up uh, or excuse me down to the uh, south and west. So we're looking at mid 90s already along the Rio Grande Valley later on today, but we will see these mid and some upper 80s in and around the metropolitan area. So it is going to be very warm and we're still going to have the humidity hanging around here today, but the humidity is going to start to go away in the afternoon tomorrow. We will have mist and drizzle around this morning, sunshine in the afternoon, kind of mixed in. Same thing again tomorrow, a lot of clouds starting off, maybe some mist and drizzle. We're going to have a fairly decent breeze overnight, so that's going to continue to pump in all of the moisture around here. And then we'll just kind of do the same thing each and every day. Morning clouds, almost a, a kind of that uh, early summertime pattern. Clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon, a little drier air, especially on Thursday afternoon as well. And then we get into Friday about the same situation. Now this computer model is trying to scare up a few more showers than Friday evening. There is the chance for it. It's not very likely though, but if something were to pop up in the afternoon, um, it could be a fairly strong thunderstorm. It's like there's a lot of pressure building, but you got to kind of pop the balloon to get it going. And there's a good lid in the atmosphere as it looks as of right now on Friday. So it's not really in the forecast yet, but just something we'll kind of keep monitoring the next couple of days. 77 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then high temperature today up to 85. And again, it's going to be on the breezy side and still humid. And then tomorrow, very warm, very humid starts and mist in the morning. We get up to 90 in the afternoon, but the humidity is going to be dropping off in the afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the same thing on Thursday, but we'll get progressively hotter each and every day. 95s here in town, so we're going to be looking at some triple digits in the Rio Grande Valley. Still hot, not as hot, but still hot this weekend. Mike, we, since we've got you right here, what's happening later today on SA Live? Okay, rustic, a lot of stuff going on, but rustic brush. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but um, where you can go there, all the supplies you need. You don't have to be very artistic, Good. but you can make, you know, fun, fun little 
just designs, maybe for your, your deck or uh, something to hang, maybe a gift. This is great for family, for the kids to do. You can have a little party there, even kind of a date night, just to kind of go and do something different. And uh, yes, they are toasting. You can do that there too. So, but the nice thing is they have all the supplies and then they clean up. <laughs> they clean that's, up. That's the that's best a, part, right? That's yeah. a big plus right and, there. And, you know, it's just something kind of simple to make. And you're just like, okay, this is sort of fun. Like, that looks yeah. like lots of fun. All right, mm -hmm. today on SA Live at yeah. 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, lots of other stuff too. Thank you very much, sir. Right now we're at 553 on your Tuesday morning. Let's go ahead and look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3058, Fireball 7. Daily 4, 3, 2, 1, 9, Fireball 5. Cash 5, 2, 3, 11, 15, 25. Texas 2 Step 16, 17, 19, 34 with a bonus ball of 23. Four minutes, 37 seconds. That's how close Texas was to a catastrophic power grid failure during February's winter storms. There have been a lot of questions about why the state's grid was so vulnerable in the first place. It's the topic of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. We will live stream KSAT Explains, the Texas power grid failure today at 7 p.m. on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app on streaming devices, and on the KSAT Facebook page. They are the underdogs of the dog world and often left abandoned and abused. Coming up on Good Morning San Antonio today, more on a special mission to save senior and special needs dogs, and more importantly, what you can do to help. Let's check Transguide right now as we go to break. A lot of folks are hitting the road right now as we approach the top of the hour, looking live at 35 at Space Center, 281 at the quarry. Samuel is back in house. He's at the traffic lab standing by, and we'll have an update for you coming up in just a few minutes. We'll be right back. San Antonio voters will most likely support Mayor Ron Nirenberg in the upcoming May election. That's according to a new poll that was just released at 6 o'clock this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. In just a bit, we break down those poll numbers. San Antonio police say a suspect is on the run after firing at a man with a shotgun at a local hotel. We'll have the latest in the investigation. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are actually at 68 degrees right now. Some people dodged rain on the way to work. I didn't, but yeah, we are expecting heat, so watch out for that. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine, everybody. Good morning. It is Tuesday, April 6th. Hope you're having a good week so far. Yeah, it's only Tuesday, but that's okay. We have lots of sunshine for you ahead. A couple hours ago, we saw some rain on the windshields in a few spots around town, and Mike Ostrich joins us live. Good morning. Good morning. See, I didn't see any. It's very spotty. You, mm -hmm. you didn't see I didn't any either. You saw some. Mm -hmm. Sam saw a little bit, so it's going to be, like you said, spotty out there. Uh, mist, drizzle. Was it heavy enough for wipers? Yes. Okay, so it was mm -hmm. more than just that little mist hanging out there, so don't be surprised if you see some of that around the area this morning. So obviously it's not going to make any difference, but it's just going to make the roads kind of kind of slippery if that is indeed the case. It almost looks like there may be a bit more of a shine on the highway over there, 410 by the airport. So uh, just kind of take it easy. Assume some of the roads are damp. Temperatures, everybody is well above normal. Mid and upper 60s all around the area. 63 in Rock Springs as of right now. Oak is still very, very high, but it did come down from the previous day's reading. Remember a couple of days ago, it was up to about 12,000 or so. Of course, we're going to get the updated pollen count coming out in about, um, say, an hour, hour and a half. Temperatures will stay basically steady this morning. Lots of clouds around here and the wind, which there's a decent breeze right now, but it is going to be picking up, especially late this afternoon going into tonight out of the southeast. That's just going to continue to pull in all this moisture. So we'll be doing the same thing tomorrow morning and we'll also keep the humidity around throughout the rest of today. 77 today at noon and then we will be topping off at 85 today. So up anywhere, say five, in some cases close to 10 degrees compared to yesterday's high temperatures. And we'll do that again tomorrow, and it's going to continue to stay on the hot side throughout the rest of the week. We get a little break in the humidity here and there. We'll talk about that coming up and take a look ahead to the weekend. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. It's been pretty quiet so far this morning. And it's still uh, remaining that way. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning to everyone out there. The travel time's looking fairly normal. 24 minutes on I-10 coming in from Bernie. 27 minutes coming in on 281 from Boulverde and 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels to downtown San Antonio on I-35. Taking a look at the maps, no uh, real serious issues on the uh, maps uh, 
at all uh, this morning. So maybe a few slowdowns here or there. But otherwise, if you need to head out now to work or or drop off the kids at school or anything like that, now would be a good time to plan to do so. Had some construction overnight at uh, 151 and 410, but on 151 now, uh, travel times look fairly normal. Eight minutes uh, going westbound and nine minutes heading eastbound from 1604 to US 90. And here's a 410 at Cherry Ridge. Uh, more traffic than we've seen over the past uh, hour, but uh, things still flowing well. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. Just into our newsroom, results in a new Bearfax KSAT San Antonio report poll are out. Mayor Ron Nirenberg is in a strong position to claim his third term in the May 1st election. That's according to a new poll of likely voters just released at 6 this morning. Sarah Costa is live downtown with highlights from those poll results. Sarah, good morning. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. And the biggest takeaway from that poll is that more than ha that San Antonio voters plan on casting their votes for Mayor Ron Nirenberg. More than half of them in that poll at 56 percent said they are going to vote for Mayor Ron Nirenberg. And according to that poll, Mayor Ron Nirenberg's biggest threat is Greg Brockhouse, who narrowly lost to Nirenberg in a 2019 runoff. A total of 21 percent of respondents say they'd vote for Brockhouse and another 19 percent say they are still undecided. Dave Metz, the founder of FM3 Research, which conducted the poll, says the mayor is in an extremely strong position. The poll was conducted from March 23rd to 29th by phone and email in both English and Spanish. A total of 618 Bear County residents were surveyed in the poll, but questions about the May 1st election were only asked of San Antonio residents who say they plan on voting in that May election, which was about 400 people. Parts of the poll suggest Nirenberg's support is in part due to the public's perception of his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, coming up in the next half hour, we'll tell you how San Antonio residents say they plan on voting on Pro for Proposition B in the May election. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. New this morning, San Antonio police say a shooter is on the run after targeting a man up on the northwest side. It happened at the Red Roof Inn at 410 near Ingram Road around 1 o'clock this morning. Police say a man was in the parking lot when a car pulled up and someone inside shot at him with a shotgun. They say the driver took off and the victim was taken to University Hospital after being hit in the leg. Police still have not found the shooter. The San Antonio Fire Department says two people made it out of their burning house before getting hurt. This happened around 2 this morning in the 2200 block of Trinity near Frio City and Brady Boulevard. Firefighters say the flames started outside the home but spread to the attic. The homeowners were able to get out before the crews arrived. The cause of the fire is still unknown, but firefighters say it did cause significant damage. To the pandemic now, local health officials report 275 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County and no new deaths. Metro Health reports 179 people remain in the hospital with the virus. The seven-day rolling average now 167 cases per day. Positivity rate at a low 2.1%, the lowest of any Texas metro area. Mayor Ron Nirenberg also gave an update on COVID-19 vaccines yesterday. He says more than 517,000 people have received one dose, while more than 312,000 people are fully vaccinated. The mayor also says anyone 75 or older can visit the Alamo Dome in the afternoons to get a vaccine without an appointment. That's starting today. 607 right now, the Minneapolis police chief himself took the stand yesterday in the trial of Jer Derek Chauvin, the officer he fired after the death of George Floyd. The prosecution now taking aim at the heart of the defense arguments that Chauvin was following department policy and training. Seen as Daryl Forges is in Minneapolis with the latest. To continue to apply that level of force to a person proned out. In key testimony Monday, Minneapolis Police Chief Madaria Arredondo rejecting the argument that former officer Derek Chauvin was following his training when he knelt on George Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. It is not part of our training and it is certainly not part of our ethics or our values. Arredondo said Chauvin's actions violated the department's use of force policy and de-escalation policies. That 
action um, is not de-escalation. The police inspector who managed a training program last year also cutting at the heart of the defense's argument that Chauvin was following his training. I don't know what kind of improvised position that is. So that's not what we train. All right. Chauvin's attorney, Eric Nelson, during cross-examination, focusing on the exact placement of Chauvin's knee. Would you agree that from the perspective of Officer King's body camera, it appears that Officer Chauvin's knee was more on Mr. Floyd's shoulder blade? Um, yes. As witness testimony continues for the second week, prosecution now shifting their focus from what happened to George Floyd to why Chauvin's actions should be considered murder and manslaughter. Chauvin has pleaded not guilty to all charges. In Minneapolis, I'm Daryl Forges. And time now is about 6.08 and about 69 degrees right now. I looked up at halftime, we're up 10. I knew at some point we were up big because I was just like, we're scoring, they're not scoring. And um, you know, everybody was hitting the shots. It was like, nobody's gonna miss. Jared Butler and the Baylor Bears are national champions, spoiling Gonzaga's perfect season and becoming the first men's team in Texas to win since 1966. We'll have more reaction from last night's big win. 18,000 people in the United States are diagnosed with life-threatening illnesses where a bone marrow transplant is the best treatment option. Just ahead on GMSA, one four-year-old girl is on a mission to find her match and help save others too. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's actually 68 degrees out there, pretty mild for the most part, but if you like the heat, great news. We're gonna have a hot week. We'll be right back. Six, 13,000 of children need a bone marrow transplant each year, but only 30% have a matching relative, leaving many hoping for a stranger to help. One of those on the list, a little four-year-old who is on a mission for a match. Max Messi has her story. Blowing up the candles for a fourth birthday is a huge milestone for twins Mackenzie and Sloan Caston. They're beautiful, amazing girls, and they're so vivacious. And, you know, with Sloan, Sloane is so resilient. Born healthy, six pound bundles of joy. At 11 months, Sloan was diagnosed with a rare brain tumor. Despite treatment, cancer kept coming back in her spine, then in her blood. Her only real hope for a healthy life, a bone marrow transplant. Her sister, while a perfect match on the playground, not a match for a donor. As a, I think a human being, when this gets something like this gets thrown at you, it's amazing what you become. Hashtag Sloan Strong has become a worldwide campaign on the gift of life registry, appealing to everyone to get swabbed, especially young adults. Between, uh, I believe it's 18 and 35 year olds is where you get 80% of the matches. So far, Sloan Strong has inspired 3,000 people to get registered and has helped save two lives while her family waits for her miracle match. She gives me an enormous amount of strength. She's courageous. We call her the GOAT. She is the greatest of all time. You stay strong for your kids, and it's part of life, and we hope that, you know, there's a happy ending. Uh, it's scary to think what could be, but, you know, we try to live one day at a time. Because Sloan and her sister are not identical twins, Mackenzie had a one in four chance of being a match. It turns out she is only a half match, which is not enough for a successful transplant. So. Their search continues. Anyone under the age of 60 can get swabbed. To request a free kit, go to giftoflife.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 615. And we had a pretty quiet morning, but mm -hmm. it looks like traffic starting to build up a little bit, Samuel. Yeah, it's still uh, relatively quiet. Traffic is building, as you said, Stephanie and Mark, but uh, things still looking uh, relatively fine on the roadways and our travel times coming into San Antonio still looking good 29 minutes for instance coming in on I-10 from Seguin and 28 <laughs> minutes coming in from the Floresville area to downtown San Antonio. And taking a look at uh, the map here, not much uh, going on. Uh, no uh, crashes or collisions or anything of that nature on the board at the moment. So that's a good thing. And if you're coming in on 90 from 1604 uh, to I-35, normal travel times there, 11 minutes in each direction. So that's uh, fairly good. And here is uh, 281 uh, at the quarry. Some traffic uh, building there still uh, flowing well, but uh, now still a good time to uh, head out if you need to uh, go to work or drop the kids off at school or uh, run some errands, guys. 
It's time for Mike's daily virtual magic trick. <laughs> yes, indeed. I was just looking at the, the 281 right there in the picture behind uh, Sam, and it's like, I can't tell if that's just dampness on the road or just kind of the usual reflection. Yeah, it almost looks like smoke or something, but that yeah. is almost basin, and it's pretty typical. It's one of the yes. places that fogs over quicker than well, most others. And, and fog has not been a problem, but mm -hmm. a lot of mist. You saw some, Sam. Right, Sam, and, saw and, some. and there are some in some of the cameras, too, Mike, some of that little misty-looking thing there, so... Oh. Could be something going on. Okay, so it's not any anything Hello big back. out there, but uh, <laughs> surprise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, just watch it because the roads are going to be uh, on the damp side. So just take it easy, especially around the buses, obviously. And temperatures are going to be staying pretty much steady this morning. I, th I had a patch of fog in there, but the we had some earlier. Uh, the wind has kind of picked up, so that's not really not going to be too much of an issue. But mist will be something you got to watch out for, making things uh, kind of slippery. And 85 degrees after school today. It's going to be well above normal. It's going to be gusty as well. Wind's going to start to pick up out of the southeast about, say, uh, 10, 20 miles per hour gusting on top of that. Beautiful picture. Love how the cow just decided to pose and look right at the camera there. Not just any cow either. I know. Good old, <laughs> got good old Longhorn. It's a great looking shot. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, here's what it looks like. Uh, this is over by the airport. We're looking off to the east, uh, 410 eastbound, and it's not too bad. Obviously, there's no reduced visibility out there. Uh, it's temperatures this week. It's going to be a hot week. Forecast temperatures 90 Wednesday and then Thursday, Friday, both at 95. The last time we hit 90 was back on the 22nd of October. Last time we hit 95 was back on the 11th of October. So it's been a good long time. Almost what is that? October, November, December, January, February, March, April, almost six months since that happened. And the records both of these days, Thursday and Friday, 99. We're not going to be close to the record Wednesday, but the record is uh, 99 and then 98 respectively for Thursday and Friday. It's going to come close to it. Uh, I don't think we're going to be hitting those records as it looks right now, obviously within three to four degrees, but it is definitely going to be up there in the upper 90s, especially as you get uh, over closer to the uh, Rio Grande Valley and down to the southwest around Carrizo Springs, Catula, Laredo. Humidity, dew point temperatures, well up there into the 60s. So everybody's feeling the humidity. It's going to continue throughout the rest of today and then also tomorrow. With all the moisture still getting pumped on in here, that means we'll see some more mist around the area throughout the morning hours tomorrow. We'll have a lot of clouds around, then we'll see some sunshine in the afternoon. And then watch as the dry line approaches throughout the afternoon. So by even lunchtime, we're going to start to see much drier air in northwest portions of the hill country. Going to have to watch out for increased fire danger potentially in the uh, western part of the hill country tomorrow as well. And then that dry air will continue to move on in here throughout the late afternoon and early evening hours. And that's going to help temperatures shoot up to 90 tomorrow. And then, of course, even hotter. We'll do the same thing on Thursday. Another dry line is going to go back. We have humidity Thursday morning and then come back through the area. And that will help get temperatures up at, there into the mid 90s. There's some of the low clouds we have right now. You can see this darker shade, this gray, just kind of filling in right there. And uh, we'll keep a few clouds, kind of a kind of what we had yesterday. A lot of clouds, some sunshine peeking on through here and there. Around the country, I mean, there's nothing really big heading in our direction. Everything is well up there to the north of us, and that's pretty much where everything's going to be staying. We're not seeing the big, remember a couple of weeks ago, we'd get those fronts moving through. We had this kind of roller coaster action. It was almost, you know, up and down every couple of days. It's not the situation in the forecast this week. 77 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then be up to 85 today. Again, partly cloudy, sort of the mixture of sunshine and clouds. It is going to start to get breezy later on today. And then we go into tomorrow. It's going to be even hotter and we'll start off 65 degrees, probably some more mist around the area and then 90 less humid in the afternoon. Thursday, less humid in the afternoon, breezy 95 degrees. Same thing on Friday, of course, you know, add five, maybe close to 10 degrees down to the uh, southwest in some cases. We're going to be seeing potentially triple digits and then not as hot over the weekend, but humid. It's like somebody sat on the remote control and we fast forwarded to June mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. So if somebody rewind, please. Yes, Normal I'm high temperatures right now are in the upper 70s. Wow. I, 79. I hope uh, this is temporary. Yeah, me too. Fingers crossed. He's, he's not commenting further, is he? No, he's not. Not very reassuring. <laughs> 621 right now on your Tuesday morning. And the Spurs finished off a long homestand with another loss. We're going to hear what Coach Pop has to say about the current state of the team. You'll find this, mate.
wherever you'd buy meat. Mm. Like the meat aisle, meat shop, meat store. So many meat places. Impossible meat made from plants. Yeah, we'll share our home address for french fries. It's easy to be unsafe. So I gave your birth date for free parking. That's how I got this robe. Now it's easy to help protect yourself. Opt in to cyber safety at Norton.com. smooth chocolate to put the world on pause Lindor made to melt you by the Lint Master Chocolatier 624 in college basketball. It's been 55 years, but a Texas team has won the men's national championship. The Baylor Bears still celebrating this morning after their big win over Gonzaga last night. Baylor made it look easy. You may not have realized Gonzaga was undefeated this season going into the title game, but the Bears steamrolled past the Bulldogs 86 to 70. First time a Texas men's team has won since Texas Western did it 1966 after the game. Baylor head coach Scott Drew was asked what it was like coaching this team to glory. Coaching is like being a parent. And Christmas time, you see the kids opening up presents. You see them excited. Uh, you're excited. And to see the uh, uh, Baylor fans be able to celebrate and cheer, uh, to see uh, uh, the city of Waco be able to celebrate and cheer, to see the state of Texas. I mean, look how much great uh, uh, basketball we have from high school, AAU, junior college, college. And we haven't won a national championship since 66. So it's long overdue for the state. Congratulations to the Baylor Bears. Well, from a sweet note to a rather sour one, the Spurs were looking to end their historic nine-game homestand, game homestand on a high note last night, but the Cavaliers had other plans. Spurs started out looking like they could dominate, but quickly lost their footing. Silver and Black went down by 10 going into the half, and it got worse. Cleveland would continue to pad their lead until the game ended. Spurs lose 125-101, and after the game, Coach Pop was brutally honest about the current state of his team. We look like we're fried. You know, we just look tired. Uh, cup is, you know, less than half filled, it seems. You know, the fact is nobody's going to feel sorry for us, and those can't be used as, ex as excuses, but I think that's all part of what we're seeing because we don't look that, you know, energetic. Spurs will now go on the road for several games. Next up, a back-to-back -back series against the Denver Nuggets. First game tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. And at least the Spurs have a winning record on the road this season. Good luck, guys. Yeah, that's true. Go Spurs, go. Time now is 626 and 69 degrees. The director of the CDC worried about a fourth wave of COVID infections. We'll hear how young people could be driving the increase in our next half hour. An 80-year-old man killed a two-year-old, now partially paralyzed, all from a crash out here on Rigsby Avenue. Now two people are facing charges. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about that. How do San Antonio residents feel about Proposition B for the upcoming May election? Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Coming up on GMSA, we have a newly released poll that suggests how residents may vote. The CDC says younger people are helping to fuel the latest spike in coronavirus infections. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Those details coming up. And let's go outside with live cam. A whole bunch of folks just now waking up. We have a lot of low clouds. Might have some fog here or there. We'll talk to Mike Osterage in just a moment. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. It is Tuesday, April 6th. Mike joined us now with a look ahead of the forecast. We're still looking at some unusually hot temperatures for later on this week as early as tomorrow. Well, even today, I mean, we're yeah. going to be the unusually hot gets gets in here uh, tomorrow and then toward the end of the week. But still today, we're going to be about five, uh, six degrees above normal. We're starting off that way this morning, and uh, we had a little bit of fog earlier up in parts of the hill country. Most of that, the wind has started to pick up, so that's pretty much not going to be that much of an issue. But watch out for a little bit of mist. There may be just a, some of it, some drizzle out there. So roads could be kind of damp in places. Otherwise, traffic there on 410 has moved along pretty well. No visibility problems. And we are at 68 degrees. 
Dew point stands at 63, so there's a lot of humidity. Wind out of the south at 10 miles per hour and a lot of oak out there, although it did come down from the previous day's reading. It's still definitely on the high side, and we're just kind of getting right into the uh, sort of the, the peak of the season as of right now. And as far as the rest of today, well, the mist, warm temperatures this morning, and then partly cloudy skies kind of look a lot like yesterday, that mixture of sunshine and clouds, 85 for high temperature. And the wind is going to start to pick up somewhat out of the southeast, especially uh, late this afternoon and then going into tonight. Tomorrow we're going to get even hotter. It will be less humid in the afternoon. We have the dry line. It's going to kind of slide on through here, so that'll drop the humidity down late in the day. Then it'll come back overnight. We'll do the same thing on Thursday morning. Tomorrow we'll probably have more mist around the area and we're going to be getting up into the mid 90s. So yeah, unusually hot by Thursday and Friday, close to record high temperatures. I don't think we're going to be hitting any and uh, not as hot this weekend but still hot, just not well up into the 90s. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, still kind of calm and peaceful out there? Oh, relatively uh, so, Mike. Good morning to you. Good morning to uh, everyone. Taking a look at the uh, map there, not uh, much going on, uh, if at all, here in uh, the San Antonio region uh, this morning when it comes to, to traffic, so that is a good thing. So now is a good time to uh, prepare to head out if you want to with the way things are going. Had a small delay here on Austin Highway up here near uh, Walsham, but still eight minutes between Walsham and Broadway, eight minutes heading the other way too, so uh, not too bad. Looking at travel times coming up throughout the region, 29 minutes coming in on I-10 from Seguin, 26 minutes into downtown from the New Braunfels area, 24 minutes from Bernie on I-10. So again, that looks uh, fairly well. And here's uh, 35 at uh, Ben's Engelman. A little more traffic uh, as the morning goes on, but things still flowing relatively well. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police say a driver who caused a deadly crash on the southeast side last week was racing at the time. That crash happened on Rigsby Avenue right outside Comanche Park. The two-year-old girl in the suspect's car was also seriously hurt. Our Katrina Weber is live at the 2600 block of Rigsby with more on our top story. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that he is not the only person facing charges. That's right. Both the suspect and the mother of the two-year-old girl are both uh, have been arrested in connection with this case. Now, the charges against the mother are for not having the toddler in a child safety seat. 20-year-old Selena Hernandez and her daughter were riding in the car with 24-year-old Daniel Tejas at the time of the crash. The charges against him include manslaughter. We told you about the crash when it happened last Wednesday evening. The arrest affidavit says Tejas had no driver's license and was traveling at more than 80 miles per hour in a 40-mile zone. His car slammed into one driven by 80-year-old Antonio Arismendez Martinez, who was killed in the crash. He was making a turn onto Rigsby from Covington Road at the time. The affidavit says Teyes' car caught fire after the crash. Again, he had three people in the car with him, including Hernandez and her two-year-old daughter. Witnesses told police that none of the adults tried to pull the toddler from the burning car. Bystanders had to rescue her, and the affidavit says that that toddler is now partially paralyzed as a result of injuries she suffered in the crash. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thanks, Katrina. A new poll is out this morning that shows how people living in San Antonio may vote in the upcoming May election. The Bear Facts KSAT San Antonio Report poll results released at 6 a.m. suggest how voters feel about the candidates for mayor and Proposition B. Our Sarah Costa is live downtown with highlights. And Sarah, what were the results on how voters felt about Proposition B? Good morning, Stephanie, and it looks like, according to that poll, it suggests that it could be a toss-up when it comes to how residents will vote for Proposition B in the May election, which is less than a month away at this time. Now, Proposition B, it's an initiative that's a high-profile one that would strip San Antonio police of their collective bargaining power. The Bear Facts case at San Antonio Report, released at 6 o'clock this morning, shows support for Prop B at 34 percent compared to those against it at 39 percent more than a quarter of respondents 28 percent are still undecided the founder of fm3 research that conducted the poll dave met says these results show the race for prop b is wide open he says it's likely that the ballot language is a little technical and confusing and many voters are in need of additional information another result suggests 
suggested that voters will support Mayor Ron Nirenberg in the May election with 56 percent of those polled. 21 percent say they would vote for Greg Brockhouse. Now, you can watch representatives from both sides of Proposition B in a debate that's coming up in a forum this Thursday at 7 p.m. that KSAT is hosting along with San Antonio Report and Bear Facts. It will be live streamed on KSAT.com. And of course, for all of these results from the latest poll, just head to KSAT.com. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Good to see you. 637, the director of the CDC says the U.S. is now in its fourth week of rising COVID infections. New cases are increasing in at least 19 states. Officials say the latest spike is coming from contagious new variants, as well as younger people who have yet to be vaccinated. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more. Good morning. Well, more than 107 million Americans have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. But it's those who have yet to be vaccinated who are behind this possible fourth wave of the virus. As younger people help fuel a surge in coronavirus cases, a plea from health experts to stay vigilant while vaccinations ramp up. COVID deaths are now rising in at least 18 states, hospitalizations up in 16 states, with a 23% jump in the upper Midwest. An ICU nurse near Detroit says she's seen more young patients now than any other time during the pandemic. Our age, and there's our children's age, and, and they are very sick. The director of the CDC says youth sports are partially to blame. We are learning that many outbreaks in young people are related to youth sports and extracurricular activities. Despite that warning, scenes like this in Texas at the Rangers home opener. <laughs> Nearly 40,000 fans packing the stadium, many without masks. Loosening restrictions and contagious new variants are making the race to vaccinate even more urgent. And we are getting new guidance when it comes to cleaning your home or office. The CDC says the risk of COVID infection from surfaces is extremely low. So in most cases, dish soap will work for cleaning those surfaces instead of disinfectants. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. In other headlines, the pandemic fueled mortgage boom is prompting states to receive nearly $700 million in federal grants for low income housing. That is nearly double the amount given last year. Grants will be used for construction, maintenance and restoration of low income housing across the U.S. It is being funded through the proceeds from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac mortgage payments. A group of farmers in Boise, Idaho, have filed a federal antitrust case against several big agricultural companies. The farmers say the companies worked together to ban online sales in order to keep the prices of seed, fertilizer, and other chemicals artificially high. Similar lawsuits have been filed in other states. Agriculture companies have said the prices are due to a competitive market. Later today, Major League Baseball is expected to announce the 2021 All-Star Game will now be played in Denver. That's according to the Associated Press. The league pulled the event from Atlanta over objections to sweeping changes to Georgia's voting laws. Critics have called Georgia's new voting laws the new Jim Crow. Meanwhile, supporters say the outcry is solely political. Back here at home, it is exactly 640 on your Tuesday morning. So glad you're with us here on GMSA. And they are the underdogs of the dog world and are often left abandoned and abused. After the break, one woman's mission is to save senior and special needs dogs and what you can do to help. Sweet girl. Blind, sick, injured, old, really old, or even paralyzed. Come on, Mammy. Dogs like little Maverick, who was found paralyzed alongside of the road, have been dropped off, left to die, and disposed of. Heidi Hartman's life passion is helping these underdogs of the dog world. A typical rescue spends 12 weeks waiting in a shelter to be adopted. Special needs and seniors spend nearly four times as long. The older they are, the less chance they're going to have of getting out. Heidi's Polka Dogs is one of the handful of rescues in the U.S. that takes in special needs and super senior dogs. She was a hot mess yeah. and we couldn't resist her. Lori Sullivan and Melissa Albright adopted a toothless, blind and deaf Chihuahua. We got blue two years ago. They estimated that she was 19 years old at the time.
add on 11 year old Hannah and her pal Bruiser. The upside to adopting an older or special needs dog, their personality is already developed. Most are calmer and they will likely know basic commands. Quieter homes without children are usually best. There can be extra costs that come with growing older. Do you really want that dog to suffer and leave it, live its last days in a shelter with nobody around, no family to love it? For many, the answer is simple. They deserve that second chance. They're getting, they, they could have a lot of life left in them. How little baby boy. For every dog rescued by Polka Dogs, they lose at least $85 after adoption fees. They get all of their funding through donations. Last year, vet bills and medical expenses cost the center over $100,000. They've adopted out more than 1,100 senior and special needs dogs so far. If you're interested in helping a senior or special needs dog, you can always foster one or volunteer here in San Antonio so they get the love and attention they deserve. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Oh, I know. My Truman turns 11 next month, Aww. and I just found out that his daddy passed away the other day oh. at the age of 13 and a half. Wow. So hopefully I get a few more years with Truman as well. Yes, yes, we hope so. Yep. Let's check traffic at 645. Samuel King in the traffic lab with the very latest. Thank you, uh, Mark and Stephanie. Things still relatively uh, calm this morning. A few delays developing there at 1604. Uh, near Bandera Road, but otherwise things uh, look fine as you look at the uh, maps here. And some good news again for some commuters. If you take a 281 uh, north or southbound, uh, more of the main lanes have opened up north of Evans Road uh, up to uh, past uh, Stone Oak and TPC Parkway there as part of the construction project. Still a lot of work up there. If you drive up there, you, you know that that's still going on, but that is another sign of progress. And he's still definitely doing some work here at that Stone Oak intersection. So you'll see some detours and delays around there, but otherwise uh, things are improving there very quickly as they get that project uh, going and completed there. Uh, eight minutes now northbound on 1604 to Belverde Road, nine minutes uh, southbound. So those are fairly good times aided, of course, by those new main lanes uh, being open. And once you get inside uh, 281, uh, inside 410, excuse me, uh, this is 281 at the quarry, still flowing, but you can still definitely see traffic is uh, building this morning. So uh, if you might want to head out now, if you need to travel in that area. Good advice. Thank you, Samuel. And for folks who may be tuning in, Truman is a yellow uh, lab? A gigantic yeah. yellow <laughs> Labrador. Aww, yes. And adorable. Mm -hmm. He's he weighs how much? He's down to 130? Down to 130? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's a... He's a big boy. Yeah. I call I, him I call him large and in charge. <laughs> I didn't realize that thing was that big. So. Yes, he's that big. Beautiful blue bonnets, Mike. And oh. folks, uh, just a cautionary tale. Watch for snakes yes. if you're out and about taking pictures in or near blue bonnets. Yeah, I mean, just in general. But, of course, uh, this grass is kind of high. And they may be out in there. So way to ruin a good picture talking about snakes anyway. <laughs> but no, <it's, laughs> on, on the serious side, do, do keep a, a lookout for that. But that is absolutely gorgeous picture. Be, Beautiful having your yard covered with those. All right, out there, 410 by the airport looking off to the east. Uh, really no problems. Doesn't look like traffic's moving slowly. The road looks fairly dry. All right, as far as the oak pollen, it has been very high the past few days. Of course, it peaked. It went down a little bit. Uh, yesterday's reading, the updated count is going to be coming out in about maybe a half an hour, but we are still getting into the uh, really the peak of the season in the next say week or so, and it'll last on into probably about the first week of May. So I guess the the best is yet to come, as they say, and all the uh, the catkins have been dropping down, so they're kind of covering everything. Wind right now is out of the south, uh, primarily at about 10, 15 miles per hour. In general, New Braunfels at 14 and it's gusting to 21 up the road at Bernie stage and we are going to have breezy conditions throughout the day and that's just going to continue to pump in all the humidity. So get used to it. I don't even get used to it, but grin and bear it because it is humid right now and it's going to stay that way throughout the day. We will have, um, you know, sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds today, sort of like yesterday. More clouds than overnight starting off tomorrow, probably some more mist around here and then we'll see some uh, clearing in the afternoon. Also, we are going to have a dry line coming through here, especially in the hill country early on in the afternoon, and that's going to knock the humidity out. And the dry line should make it through town by about dinner time or so, maybe late afternoon. And then it's going to start to go back again, as they usually do. They, they sort of um, go fluctuate, and uh, that's going to be the case in into Thursday morning. So we'll have more humidity Thursday morning. Dry line comes back through. 
drops humidity down. What that's going to be doing though, yes, it will be more comfortable, but dry air heats up a lot more easily than moist air does. And so that's going to allow temperatures to get even warmer tomorrow and just plain old hot Thursday and Friday. We're looking at mid 90s here in town. Also, there is a small chance that Friday evening, there's another bit of a kind of a front, if you will, trying to slide through here, that it could touch off a couple of showers with thunderstorms. Really, really small chance, but the atmosphere is going to be kind of uh, getting kind of squirrely Friday evening. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Obviously, it's a few days away, but I'm just going to keep keep tabs on that. 77 degrees at noon today, partly cloudy skies. High temperature gets up to 85 today, so about five above yesterday. Add to that, add another five on Thursday. We're going to be flirting with uh, records. 99 Thursday, 98 record on Friday and then down to the upper 80s over the weekend. So hot weekend still. Mr. Osterhage. Yes, sir. We have a request. We'd like to know what's happening on SA Live today. Yes. Uh, hopefully there's some food. I always get hungry. But <laughs> Rusty, uh, you time that out just right, right? I, I know. So um, if, if you're looking for something fun to do, you don't have to be an artist to do this. They kind of step you through it and give you all the things to do. This is yeah, if you want to just have a little, maybe a couple's night, a little date night, take the kids there or something like that. If, you know, with Mother's Day coming up in a couple of months oh, for yeah. grandma, uh, maybe to decorate something, just a little sign to put on your back patio, a housewarming gift or somebody. They're, they're really fun things to do. And as you see, maybe some uh, little adult beverages, too, that you, can, uh -huh. that you can take with you over there. So Yeah. Well, it's, it looks like uh, very, very nice like gifts you can make for people. Yeah. You know? And again, it's simple. It's just it's a fun little thing to do on an evening. Sometimes. Okay. So we're going to have them on the show today at one. All right. You're going to do some painting for us. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be painting or maybe some other crafts, but I will try. Okay. Would you like me All to right. make you something? Yes. Yes. Because the finger paints uh, have already dried out. And the oh, paint by numbers. Good. Yeah, the paint by numbers. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> 651 right now on your Tuesday. And with so many people dying from COVID-19 and other complications, few people want to talk about death and even less want to prepare for it. Tomorrow on GMSA, how one group is helping to make preparing for death a less taboo topic. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're going to have the latest in the fight against the pandemic. The CDC has an urgent new warning saying that young people are now fueling the latest surge. Also, the travel industry is really looking for a comeback. So when will one of the biggest cruise lines look to set sail? They say with everyone on board fully vaccinated. Is that a good idea? Dr. Fauci going to join us to discuss right here on GMA. Another morning show has flown by. It's five till seven. Let's take one last look at traffic with Samuel King. Hi, uh, Stephanie and Mark. We're seeing a couple of uh, delays and slowdowns building up here as we get closer to uh, 7 o'clock. So let's uh, head over to uh, the wall here real quick. We'll start here in 1604, uh, just past Bandera Road, heading eastbound. You're down to 25 minutes approaching Hausman. We're going to take you to the other side of the area now. We have this slowdown here, Loop 410 northbound at I-10 East, down to 18 miles per hour, approaching that interchange. Travel time still looking 524 minutes coming in on I-10, for instance, from Bernie. And this is I-10 at Vance Jackson flowing well, Mike. And we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. Couple little uh, little peaks or little breaks in the clouds, trying to see some blue sky back in there. And uh, 68 still here in town, mid 60s and upper 60s all around the area. 77 at noon, 85 for a high temperature, and it is going to be breezy today. And then the next few days, going to continually get hotter. Mid 90s Thursday and Friday, gonna be hot. Well, Again, congratulations to the Baylor Bears yay. winning the national title game last night. Yeah, congrats. We'll see you guys back here at 9.